Okay, I'm going to show you something really quite simple here. What I've got here is a piece of paper divided up into, um, it's actually 7 by 10 squares, the 5 centimetres, then divided into triangles. Okay, so 240 triangles here. This will all make sense eventually. Um, I'm going to work in primary colours, so I'm just going to use Academy Yellow, Cobalt Blue, Alizarin Crimson. Uh, an ultramarine and then I'll, I'll, I'll do the last wash in a purple so it's going to be a colour study in five washes but just watch what happens okay so that's the first phase what I've done is just taken a cadmium yellow and just graded it light to dark or turn it squares all the way down okay Okay, so what I've done now is just put a, um, a cobalt blue, again on alternate lines, again grading it. So what we end up with is in the top left hand corner we've got the strongest colours, tones I should say, and down in the bottom right the palest ones. So I'm going against one of the golden rules of watercolour down here by putting a lighter colour on a darker colour. But you can get away with that um, on small areas, it's just on big areas you can't. Some people call it a glaze, I don't really use it much but... All right. Okay, so that's layer three, and all I've done here is put um, that's it, pure uh, an alizarin crimson in a flat wash. There's no gradient on that, but I've done the diagonals of every other square, so you can see it overlapping, dark to light. not making much sense at the moment but it will so that's what we got so far okay there's a bit more to talk about here what I've done now is put this where well, this sort of quite muddy green on um, you could pick any color but the tone was flat again not graded and I've done the opposite diagonal stripes so these ones running up here so if we look at it long ways on now We've, got, we've started to get a lot of different things going on. Standing in front of the original is even stranger because certain lines, vertical lines, really start coming out at you. We've got a total of 15 pure white triangles left. Now they stay for the rest of the painting and what you'll see is they'll start to really leap out. Now you can see when the darker colours are around the white here, <clears throat> stands out a bit more than the same white there because the colours surrounding it aren't as dark it's all about contrast anyway two more layers to go look at the blues very strange ok Okay, it looks like a completely different painting now. What I've done is I've put on this blue here, which is uh, basically an ultramarine, on the horizontals. So all that yellow is now gone. Um, what we can see clearly here is, whoops, where are we? The initial lines, these initial yellow washes, which are graded light to dark, sorry, dark to light, have now gone from a blue at the top to a green at the bottom. Loads of things are going on. It's coming. You see these squares here? They're starting to pop out. They're really starting to show. More on the left side at the moment because of the contrast. Remember this is the darkest corner still. And that's the lightest set up there. One more to go. And we'll see what happens. Okay, so here's the finished piece. What I've done is added that purple tone there, the lighter one, on the uh, on the vertical stripes. So what we can see is this left hand side has a greater contrast than the right particularly at the bottom, here's the weakest corner because this is where the initial uh, yellow and blues washes were graded that's the strongest so we've actually got 16 colours on any 4 squares, there they are there 
but we've got a massive variation of tones and colours because each colour, although we've used the same, the tones are varying. So, I'll leave you to work out how I come to this conclusion. We have 224 separate tones and washes on this painting. Let's look at it from this side here. So it just t turns into a totally different painting when you put it. Yeah, very strange. Okay, I hope you enjoyed that.